Thank you. 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 Th
Not only Henry so much as looked at a gal all his life. I wish I raised myself to be more like him. <laughs> Why, well, I'm sure that my little cat would not be interested in your nephew. Whoa! <laughs> there ain't never been a nobler fellow than our Leander. Why, he's got himself a fine job, too. Really? And what does this Leander person do for a living? Why, he's got full charge of the biggest pickle factory <laughs> all over the mountain. A pickle factory? Cars. Why, ain't you never heard of Pickens Pickles, man? Why, right on the label it reads, we'll give you a thrill for the very last bill. <laughs> Cookie, he prayed to go, too. <laughs> I'm glad there aren't any male guests here, Mama. They'd be bound to annoy you by begging you to marry them, as they always do. By the treasure, so observant. I'm forever having to dissuade male suitors. But I promised my little pet that I shan't marry again for ever so long. But I have plenty of time for that. Why, that's right up, old cactus plant thinks she's a bachelor's butt. <laughs> Here? 
Why, do tell! If, if you're going to bring that car, his brother? Uh, I didn't make no mention of her in his uh, letter, Uncle, so I kind of think he's coming home this time. Well, not if I know females, she ain't coming back, so. Why, last time I remember Jean Pickens was up there with her uncle. Her, boy, she was so smitten, I knew I just did believe it. I bet you could have married her for one of You mustn't say such things, why? <laughs> She's worth a poor to one, just a poor working boy in her eyes. Oh, no, that don't make no difference. Jonathan Logan, are you going to stop that babbling, or ain't you? I reckon when it comes time for Leander to take a wife, he'll pick one for himself. Maybe he will, Ma, and maybe he won't. But this Imogene Pickens has got Leander all picked out already. Just like you picked me out, and had me marching down the aisle right up to the altar before I even knew what was happening. <laughs> oh, you the worst ambition, did not? It'll be a sorry day for you if I have to remind you of it one more time. Oh, 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 you pray me nuts. Oh, but you have. How, how charming. 
laughing and winning his voices. Oh, and every word falls upon my ears like a fluttery caress. And now I must make my departure. Oh, wait a minute. You can't leave. You can't go to the store again tonight. Let's stay here at least two more. Oh, I'm afraid that's quite impossible, sir. You see, I am alone. Alone and penniless. Well, lay in the gosh and gal. We ain't so poor, but what we can give you a room for the night. We wouldn't send nobody out in such a time. How proud she is, as proud as she is pure. But, but my hooky, I just had an idea. Well, you just keep it to yourself. <laughs> we ain't got no time here to hear your foolishness now. Well, that's ain't right, foolishness. Now, you just said there was a work girl, didn't you? That's right. I, I'm just a humble working girl who was seeking employment so I could keep my body and soul together. Oh, and, and I bet you're a real good worker gal, too, ain't you? Well, how did you know that? Well, that was easy. I guessed it. <laughs> hey, now, Ma, you said you was looking for a girl to be hired around here. Why don't you hire her? Well, now, Pa, uh, that's the first sensible thing I hear you say in years. I was just thinking the same thing myself. What do you think, gal? Would you like to stay here with us and work around the inn? What I like is to have honest toilet and earn my living by helping others. Oh, yes, nothing could please me more. Hey, what did you think of that? Lanny. Wouldn't it be great to have Trudy stay in here with us? Sure. Yeah, well, I tell you, it's a great idea. You know, the more I think of it, well, the more I think of it, that's all. <laughs> well, then it's all settled. I got a nice room for you down here. I'm sure you're going to get along just fine. Now, you come along with me so as I get you an apron, and you get to work soon as you're able. Oh, she's a pretty little thing. Boy, oh boy, I put one over on Ma that time right off the bat. Why, she'll be so busy watching out the purity's looking for what doing, she won't have the slightest idea what I'm up to. Ha <laughs> ha! Got it, then, you old brat. <laughs>
while we can get better at playing it. Uh, why don't we all go in now? <laughs>
this time, I cannot fail. <laughs> oh, a maid! Fetch me a drink of water, girl. My thirst grows apace. Water, we're frozen, and you? Yes, Purity. It is I. Did you think that you could escape? Ah, if you advance one step further, I shall call Ray. Why, Purity, I can hardly understand why. Why, why you should so fear me, and why you ran away so, so secretly. As if you didn't know. I ran away because you insisted on forcing your unwelcome attentions upon me. The gypsy fortune teller warned me this villain would continue to pursue me. But certainly a working girl such as you should be impressed with the affections of a man of my rank. You were rank enough to pretend you cared for me, and all the while you were staring others into your web. I know all about Bertha, the sewing machine girl, and I have positive proof that you are married to Nellie, the beautiful clothes model. You, boy, were crossing him, are the reason why girls leave home. Tut, 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 tut. Am I to play playing if girls find me fascinating? <laughs> I never took for Bertha seriously, nor have I ever been married to Nellie. It is idle gossip, I assure you. I care nothing of your affairs, sir. I left my good position at the canning factory to escape you and your kind. And now I demand that you leave here and get out of my sight. But, but me, oh, but! Either you shall leave here or I shall. No room is big enough to harbor the both of us. That is up to you, my brown beauty. For I intend to stay here for some time to come. <laughs> I shall be forced to go up to the cold, cruel world and, and battle for my existence. Aww. Aww. I who am thirsty for a home and, and a pure, clean life. I will not permit you to go out this storm. Listen to the thunder. <laughs> you to care for me, Purity. Really, I will. Oh, I know I've been a trifle wild over these past few years, but, but that's all over and done with now. Come, Purity. Fly away with me. There's a thunder! I've Seeing you again, young man? Man, you 
Well, if you're going to be around here, I'll live here. I thought so. It must have been a dull and tiresome experience before this new maid arrived. I wish you much happiness in, in your newfound companionship. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Enough, I say. Where is the baby now? Babe's out there in the barn. I couldn't leave a child out on a night like this. You want me to bring it in? Certainly not, you fool. The babe must not be suspected to be with us. It must be discovered by someone apart from us. Yeah, but what if they trace? What if they find out I did the job and they trace me here? There's not the slightest chance of that. The babe has no father, and the mother is in the hospital ailing. It was sheer genius on my part to have you so firmly entrenched in the affections of the babe's mate that they'll never discover it was you who took the bed. <laughs> I, I had some dirty low down stinks in my time trapping him, but you're the blackest crook I ever saw. One more word like that for you, Jeff Light, and you'll regret the day that you were home. All right, all right, I'll do what you say because I have to. You got the upper hand on me, but, but why do I have to stay here now? Because I need your help in furthering my present schemes. You see, I intend to get the deed from old man Lowe. Now, I need your help. I may not have enough ready cash at the present moment, but I have enough plans up my sleeves to discover. I want you to watch the maid here. You understand, she is not to leave the press. Well, I understand already. Say, is there any place here where I can watch us? You'll find your quarters at the top of the stairs and to the right. Oh, and one more thing, Lon. I am posing here as a man of wealth and position. And I expect you, since you are supposedly my servant, to treat me with much courtesy and deference. Do you understand? Uh, I understand all right. Oh, I don't think be two hands around that white throat of his. I choked the daylights out of that black-hearted snake. Do it! Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ain't got no idea. Uh, is there a note in the basket, laddie? No, 
up and suck the baby. What is it, Leander? Well, what have you there? Well, Leander, he found that basket there out in the barn. But, but what's inside? Why, it's the bag. <laughs> you can't leave it here. It's preposterous. Would you cast a wave but drift on a night like this? Oh, you couldn't do such a dreadful thing. We'll keep it here until morning at least, and perhaps its fond parents will come in search of their offspring. Yeah, if you're any right, we have to show this baby some shelter on a night like this. Same as we show any human. Well, yeah, but maybe I better go look out the bar. Maybe there's a twin out there or something. <laughs> Listen to the chimes. It's six o'clock. 
I'll be home at six o'clock. <laughs>
radiance? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Come on, man. Do you mean you wouldn't dare sit beside me? Oh, dear lady, you guessed my secret. You are as wise as you are lovely. The empty-headed poor. If I sat next to her, I'd be apt to fall asleep. <laughs> I can feel myself losing my temper. 
the house of God to do the work of Satan. She looks lovelier than ever. What do you mean by that? You ain't never seen her before you come here, have you? Uh, I, I meant, of course, that, that she looks better today than she has any time since I've arrived here. Is he speaking the truth, Gertie? Is that what he was saying? Well, of course I'm speaking the truth. Why, why your new maid and I, Purity, I mean, Miss Dean, we were just exchanging a little badinage. I was asking her if the mountain air was entirely responsible for the roses that have found her way to her cheeks. I don't like her. You might as well know it. Why, for truth's sake. No, Leander, please. You think because now that you and Mr. Crowley have been fighting over me, why, why don't I have to leave this thing forever? Yes, Longfellow, it's a, it's a fortunate thing for you that I am gentleman enough to protect Miss Dean's good name. I hope you'll apologize to your aunt's maid for, for putting her in such an embarrassing position. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you like them either? Like them? Why, if they were only words enough to express my loathing of him, why, if he would just leave here, I'd, I'd be the happiest girl in the world. Well, then I'm going to throw him out of here right now, baby, baby. No, Leander, wait. You mustn't do such a thing. Well, no, I suppose not. But still, to make you happy, I'm throwing him out of here. No, no, wait. You forget that, that Mr. Crockett has a wealthy man, but oh, I am just a, a poor servant. Come. You got my lesson uh, ready for us to go to see the period. Sure beats all much up there. <laughs> 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 Money and when my adventure gets old. No, Leander, you mustn't speak that way. You see, 
I can't marry anyone with this wretched secret hanging over my head. No, there can never be anyone in bliss for purity beings. <laughs>
call me to do such a thing? Oh, gosh, I know I was wrong in asking you to talk to her. Now you're all mad at me, ain't you? Say rather that I'm disappointed. Honor is everything, Leander, and ranks above life and love. Why, you tarnished the good name of Longfellow by considering marrying someone so far beneath you. A mere working girl. Well, well, I'm a working man, ain't you know, Why shouldn't I marry a working girl if I want to? Why, Purity's the smartest and prettiest girl I've ever seen. Why, reckon I'd like to get her to marry myself. There must be something I can do to prevent you from throwing your life away on this girl. Nothing you can say will stop me from marrying her. She'll have me. We shall see. But little does he know of the torrent of hatred he has unleashed in my heart against this upstart of a man. <laughs>
Security D will be on her way. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Robert and Frothingham, and he stole my money and he skipped the country. And now Mom and me are going to have to move out of the U Land Inn and move over to the hills into the poorhouse in Ionia. <laughs> I haven't any idea. We, we can't take you to the courthouse with us. Oh, don't worry about the babe, Mr. Logan. I shall take her with me wherever I go and look after her. Oh, you're, you're such a nice girl. You're like a heroine to Ma and me. Boy, you know, after all this has happened to me, I, I'm beginning to feel my age for the very first time. Oh, try not to worry too much, Mr. Logan. Perhaps something will happen at the last moment that will that will prevent your leaving here. Oh, I'm afraid not. It's too late. Nothing. Save us now. Stop, girl. Cry something to say to you. Not now, Miss Pickens. Some other time, if you don't mind. But I do mind. I wish to speak to you here and now, and I command that you hear me out. As you wish. But please be as brief as possible. I have a proposition for you. If you shall promise to leave this inn here and now, I shall give you $1,000 in cash. You? You would pay me $1,000 just to have me leave here? With the proviso, of course, that you never darken these doors again. Even without my presence here, Leander Longfellow would never turn his attention to you. For once you covet something that your great money cannot buy. Leander Longfellow is not for sale. She knows. But who could have told her? The impertinent minx. I shall crush her as I would a flower. <laughs> but surely you can't think that I am interested in Leander. Think it? Why, I know it. We're not talking now as maid to mistress, but as woman to woman. All the money of Pickens' pickles can't make Leander yours. This heart belongs to me, and to me alone. We shall see. Even were you foolish enough to go through a marriage ceremony with Leander, you would be wedded and parted within the same hour. It's easy to see now why you never lost an opportunity to insult or humiliate me. Why, you've been raised from infancy to believe that money can buy everything and anything you desire. Well, for once you are bought. The, the humble working girl has won what the great heiress can never buy. I shall add another thousand to my offer. Two thousand dollars is yours if you leave this in tonight. Nay, nay, I will not soil my hands with your filthy lucre. Silence, do you hear? Well then, name your price and I shall pay it. Woman, do you think you can buy my soul? Why, when I leave here, I shall do so of my own volition. And until then, I demand you spare me any more of your insults. Since when did the mere maid place demands on a person of my proud <coughs> Your position is proud only because of the money you were married. Why, if you were forced to earn your own bread, you'd starve. I demand that you send her away. It will be not necessary to send me away, for I am leaving the same tonight without delay. Oh, Beauty, wait a minute, I can't I'm let you... I'm sorry, Leander, nothing you can say will make me change my mind. 
but before tonight is over, I shall be on my way. <coughs> <laughs> what did you say to her to make her want to leave here like that? What did I say? Why, Leander, I was merely following my promise and begging the girl to reconsider and marry you. But she didn't leave here for that reason. You must have said something else to her. I must plant the seeds of suspicion against the maid in Leander's mind. Poor Leander, how I hate this illusion of you. But hasn't it ever occurred to you that there's somebody else in Purity Dean's life? What? She is leaving here tonight to join someone else. You have been mistaken in her all along. She is not what she seems. I don't believe a word of that. Purity is pure. Pure as the driven snow. She may have been, but like the snow, she too drifted. <laughs> Never purity is as pure now as the day she was born. Well, she only wanted you to believe that. But I wonder, would you say that if you know what I do? For I tell you, Leander, I have discovered Purity Dean's secret. Oh, you have? Well, hurry up and tell me what it is then. Aha! Uh -huh, that shot struck home. <laughs> and now to further my advantage. <laughs> purity Dean has refused to marry you because of her secret, which she refused to divulge. I have uncovered the true facts. Purity Dean is the wife of Mortimer Frothingham, and she is leaving here tonight with her child so that she may join him. What? I hate to be the one to deal you such a blow, Leander, but it's time that you stop living in this dream world that you've been occupying since Purity Dean arrived here and hypnotized you. Well, I don't believe a word of what you're saying. Purity hates Frothingham. Now you breathe and know it. Why, she never married that hound. She only pretended to dislike him in order to win your favor. Well, that's enough, do you hear? I don't want to listen to no more nonsense such as the good name of the girl I'm going to marry. You mustn't turn your back on the one and only true friend you have, Leander. I simply must find out how he feels in regard to me. Why, nobody can say friends with me and say such things about Purity. I never intended being unkind to the girl. It's just that I'm... Naturally, frank and straightforward, and I find it difficult to conceal the truth from you. Why would you believe your purity even accused me of having designs on you? Designs on me? What kind of designs? <laughs> I know it sounds silly, but she actually said that I was in love with you and that I was trying to win you for a husband. What? I know it sounds absurd, Leander, still. Stranger things have happened. Oh, they? they sure have. I ain't never heard anything to tell funnier than you and me being married. <laughs> <laughs> Is there nothing I can do to win this man's heart? No. No. Oh, uh, Purity knows she's the only gal in the whole world for me. Perhaps she felt that if she left here, you would be drawn to some other girl for comfort. Never. If I can't have her, I I'll marry, I'll die a single man. <laughs> oh. What's the matter? You look sick. <laughs> I've been suffering from a headache all evening. I must ask you to excuse me, Leander. Another mistake I've made. Another step in the wrong direction. I simply cannot turn back now. I must triumph at the end. <laughs> Purity? No, 
now there's another secret that causes me to depart. You mean to tell me you got another secret on top of the one you had before? <laughs> That's right, clever Leander. How I shall miss you. You are always so understanding. Well, now listen, Purity. You gotta stay here at least till morning. You owe it till the poor help was paid there. Then I, I, I'll drive you over to the station myself tonight, uh, tomorrow morning. You really mean that? I sure do, by gosh. Well, I'll stay until morning if you wish. I'll go put the babe back in her crib now.
Once old man Logan and his wife are fast asleep, I want you to steal into their room and chloroform them. I want you to go into the safe, pull the deed away from the safe, and bring it to me here. Clarify him? Oh no, don't ask me to do that. I'm not asking you to do that, I'm telling you to do that. Once I get that deed in my possession, I'll tear it up and forge a new deed and have full ownership of the new land deed. <laughs> child you made me bring here. Once I get the papers in my hand, I'll tear them up, then burn oh, them! No, 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 wait a minute now. I'm not going to stand by and see you do that. You can tear up those papers, but you're not going to burn up that baby. Egad! Who said anything about burning up a baby? Don't be a fool, you fool. If you folks <laughs> wanted anything, just pile her down to me. Somebody's here. We must hide. Hide quickly. Hide. Hide. Where? I hide. I'm going to hide here. Under the desk at once. <laughs> Boy, is there something I can do for you, man? Oh, I was just about to ring the bell when you arrived. <laughs> Are you the owner of this fine <coughs> inn? Oh, that's right. I'm Jonathan Logan, the boss of this place. Jonathan Logan, where you been loping all this time? <laughs> and why ain't you help me with the servant? <laughs> and you must be the fine and charming innkeeper. Of this, of this man here. Uh, that's right. She's my keeper. <laughs> oh, I feel weak. Oh, oh, please allow me to sit down for a spell. Oh, well, sure, man. Oh, Why come on over here? Watch oh, that yourself oh, down. Can oh, I get you something? Uh, oh no, no, I'll, I'll be all right. Uh, thank you. Is there something to trouble you, man? Will you keep still, Jackson? <laughs> I ain't never seen a female that <laughs> week.
Can it be? Yeah. 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 <laughs> How came you to know the man was here, madam? I found her by, by accident. Oh, please allow me to pass. I'm too weak to stand here. Oh, oh, just let me give her one tender little kiss of farewell. <laughs>
Because I am a wealthy woman, and I shall share half of my fortune with all. Oh, purity, pure as the driven snow. 